good morning to all of you dear persons and thankful to scientific organizing committee of diabetes india to provide me this opportunity this is a glp1 symposium supported by novo nordisk and the slides which i am presenting are created by novo nordisk team so since yesterday we are talking on lifestyle cut on the calorie intake fatty liver like like many orations yesterday all orations talked about the importance of cutting calories ectopic fat and dr sheshadri talked yesterday about how the and dr makkar also talked on the same lines how how the insulin resistance develops and that's how the major culprit is obesity and in spite of so many years of so many pharmacotherapeutic agents till few years ago our objective was to somehow bring glucose into control but now it has understood well though though it's very challenging it's not easy to implement lifestyle modification by will and that's where comes the role of maybe a surgical process like procedure like surgical bariatric or or a medical bariatric kind of things and there comes the therapeutic agents like glp1 receptor agonist so that's what i am going to make a background for the next discussions on the glp1 receptor agonist therapy and newer information talking about these therapies so weight and diabetes obviously this you keep listening every time that every kg of body weight gain will reduce will lead to increase in hba1c and worsening of glycemic control and every kg loss obviously it is not just weight it is the bad fat which is leading to secretion of many cytokines which are causing insulin resistance and a vicious cycle is created and we know that our vascular tissue is a organ which is also very much dependent on good function of insulin and if the insulin resistance is happening at those tissues that creates the background for the beginning of atherosclerosis and that's how when these therapies like glp1 receptor agonist therapy started primarily as a diabetes management therapies then slowly they moved to the weight management and now newer understanding has changed as we are understanding how these molecules play their role so that's known that if patients with diabetes find it difficult to lose weight as compared to non diabetics and again here the role for insulin resistance also comes and 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 that's what is our routine clinical practice we keep talking about patients about you should lose weight but you tell me in how many of the patients you succeed in spite of lot of discussion with them so apart from counseling discussion and advices there is a need of a pharmacotherapeutic agent and there comes this is again about the weight loss which we have discussed and the importance in terms of hba1c reduction and there is no doubt about the benefit of weight loss and the trial which was discussed yesterday also that was the direct trial that is from uk and there a good calorie restriction led to a good in fact remission of diabetes but we have to see those those who listen about, about direct trial they should know this thing what was the calorie intake participants were asked and the number was 800 calories now to sustain on 800 calories obviously 
is more challenging and that's what we were talking yesterday evening like like our indori places where where one meal will be 800 calories so in in that environment now we are talking in terms of calorie restrictions and expecting our patients to follow it and those who follow it obviously these are the therapeutics which are going to support them make it easy for them to follow so we need a therapy in diabetes which causes weight loss so two therapies simultaneously came up which were having weight loss otherwise earlier either weight neutral or weight gain like like if you will think of metformin metformin is basically weight neutral no specific mechanism means mechanism wise some anorexia some people may lose weight but it's not a primarily a drug which is known for a good weight loss so two therapies simultaneously developed where we were talking about weight loss one is hglt2 inhibitors and second is glp1 receptor agonist and here we have to understand one very basic fundamental difference between the two therapies one therapy is causing weight loss which is hyperglycemia dependent and as the glucose is going down its weight loss effect is disappearing that's how it is moderate or or 3 kg kind of thing can happen and other side is it simultaneously increases the appetite of the patient and that's how now two opposing things are happening one by glycosuria helping in weight loss and simultaneously increase in appetite versus two glp1 receptor agonist they are decreasing appetite and there comes a very basic understanding that there are the drugs in glp1 also all the drugs are not shown equal efficacy there are differences it's not just glp1 that matters because then there are many things will come up how the human appetite is regulated where these factors can play their role and that's how that has to be taken care so there comes the role of the brain in regulating appetite and here we as physician we see differences among different patients and few patients hypothalamic feeding center is so strong that it's difficult to inhibit it and 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 there comes the important molecules and that's how when you will see the doses of these drugs it keep changing for diabetes for satiety you will diabetes control different dose for satiety different dose in diabetics and when just simple obesity and you want to now create a satiety you require even higher dose that's how because these are the mechanisms in the hypothalamus and those drugs which cross blood brain barrier reach to these centers they obviously will be more effective in inhibiting feeding center and stimulating satiety center and importantly glp1 molecules reach to the brain they cross blood brain barrier and they can work here provided their structure is such that they are permitted to reach to these places and, and this is obviously a good learning over a period of time that from duodenum to colon that's how that's how the feedback mechanisms are going on but but in the new lifestyle most of the things human brain is bypassed and, and that's how they keep eating more even if it is not required and that's how the beginning of diabetes happens and you can see in this diagram that from almost all portion of intestine glp1 is coming and then over now now the glp1 story is roughly 25 years and in last 25 years we have understood many areas on glp1 including glucose control by its effect on alpha cells and beta cells in pancreas including its effect on appetite regulation delaying gastric emptying and causing weight loss and that's how when i see obesity therapeutics this is an area where no very effective molecule is available to weak clinicians 
In fact, if you see most of the molecule, the stories from Rimona bond to sibutramine to Lorca serine, all these molecules came and disappeared. And, and this is one molecule which will become an obesity drug, already became an obesity drug and obviously uh, at least now a good molecule available for weight management in diabetics as well as non-diabetics. And then the next thing came is a byproduct of the US FDA recommendation that all diabetes drugs will need to do a cardiovascular outcome trial. And that's how from leader trial and then subsequent trial including rewind trial and then sustain and so many trials now we gradually understood that GLP-1 is a class of molecule which is primarily beneficial in patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and that's the next area which has been added upon with GLP-1 receptor agonist that is the cardiovascular effects and we understand that in patients with type 2 diabetes it's the cardiovascular diseases which are the major killing causes and, and thanks to these CVOT programs that we got an opportunity to follow and monitor a huge number of patients with diabetes for a long duration and that's how the understanding of heart failure and the protective therapies in ASCVD came and there as you know that GLP-1 receptor agonists are considered as a one of the most effective agent to reduce the recurrence of ASCVD if somebody already had ASCVD and reduce the chances of having cardiovascular death or a ASCVD event in somebody who is at a very high risk. And for that, we have that's what is shown here. The therapies which were developed primarily for glucose lowering. Then we came to know that they are working in a glucose dependent manner and hence no hypoglycemia risk because that's another problem that when we try to achieve a very good HbA1c or ask our patient to cut down on the calories with our traditional therapy, obviously hypoglycemia comes into the picture. So here though no risk of hypoglycemia, along with that people can lose weight with cardiovascular benefits which are now proven with, with such continuous 3-4 big trials. And, and that's how these are the data of various GLP-1. This is a quite busy slide showing you various GLP-1 receptor agonist and weight loss. Whenever you see these slides, just one word of caution from my side, these are clinical trial data. And in clinical trials, we take the patient of different BMIs. Like, like in trials patient, we can include BMI 25 onwards. In a cardiovascular outcome trial, BMI 23 onwards. So that's how sometimes the weight loss doesn't look that big. But, but when you see a real clinical practice scenario, suppose you have selected a patient whose BMI is 34 and now you are treating with a GLP-1 receptor agonist, don't expect a 3-4 kg, it will, be, it will be far, far higher than that. That's what we see and, and it, it, it depends on, on how much is the patient is also involved. But that's what we can see here that it is a very effective HbA1c reduction, reducing agent. And if you look at the HbA1c efficacy in many monotherapy trials, we see that, okay, this particular drug, this much A1c reduction. If you look at here, the HbA1c reduction and then look at the few bars and their sizes here. The darker blue is liraglutide and you can see everywhere it comes significantly good HbA1c reduction. The red one is semaglutide. So you can see semaglutide in different doses how much is the HbA1c reduction. The, the orange one is dulaglutide. So that's how you can see here that there is heterogenicity in the HbA1c reduction. But in general, what I have observed, those molecules which has 
primarily relatively smaller in size can cross blood brain barrier and is structured on human glp1 they are more effective in cv protection as well as hba1c reduction and if we select the right patient the hba1c reduction with a glp1 receptor agonist is is like like insulin therapy that is that is what i keep observing this is about the body weight and again different glp1 receptor agonist and here the weight loss will depend on the dose also so as we are increasing the dose because in glp1 it is the dose dependent effects which are observed so just a glp1 raising won't work how much glp1 is going high according to that the satiety center delayed gastric emptying these all mechanisms will get activated and that's how we are going to see the effects which are based on their doses also and and that's why these drugs have a standard fixed doses and in every drug you will see they will we recommend to reach to that dose which is considered as a optimal dose creating that glp1 level which will help in a good weight loss so that's how different drugs are compared here like sulfonylurea thiazolidone alpha glucosidase inhibitor dpp4 inhibitor sglt2 glp1 and insulin metformin is not listed here but in general we know that sulfonylurea will be good effective drug but but obviously if we look at the other parameters then then they won't be very good there fortunately we are aware that sulfonylurea particularly glimepiride carolina trial cv neutrality was shown while glp1 receptor agonist and sglt2 inhibitors they have both shown cardiovascular benefit but if i have to differentiate between the two drugs in terms of cardiovascular benefit the heart failure sglt2 inhibitor atherosclerosis glp1 receptor agonist this can be considered as a very broad differentiation though there will be a lot of overlap and in addition to this they are going to help in weight loss that's what is the uh, basic thing and that's what my topic is we are moving now from glucocentric to adipocentric approach because glucocentric mechanisms got activated secondary to adipocentric abnormalities so rectifying adipocentric abnormality is the rectifying the primary defect and that's how it has to be beneficial so that's what is the glp1 and here comes the huge change now so this this slide was also presented yesterday in oration that is the american diabetes association 2023 guidelines and here now the diabetes therapeutics has been divided into two major segments one if is your patient has cardio renal protection need then okay carry on whatever you are doing but please consider glp1 and sglt2 and again broad classification heart failure sglt2 atherosclerosis glp1 receptor agonist otherwise if your objective is just diabetes management then you should take care of weight management also wherever it is needed so obviously it will this area will not be applicable to all patients it has to be very much individualized and their american approach versus indian patient bmi etc may be having quite differences but you can see here how the international world in diabetes is moving so major focus is on reducing adipocyte mass through those therapy which works on all these areas and there comes the important role of these very effective glp1 receptor agonist this i have already talked about so we have gradually understood type 2 diabetes in a better way and now we understood that insulin resistance a higher adipocyte mass and and that's how if we can take care of these primary issues we can 
manage the next level complications which are expected to happen with diabetes and that's how uh, we have to understand that these core defect and how to rectify them. So this was my summary slide. Thank you very much.